Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'd like to share with you a case of a hypermature cataract, silicone oil, posterior sinique, and capsule fibrosis. So this patient was sent to me by a retinal specialist. This patient had a retinal detachment and then silicone oil and subsequently developed this a very dense cataract with a capsule fibrosis and posterior sinique. Because of the difficulty of this case, I decided to put iris hooks in the beginning of the case to maximize my ability to visualize the cataract and to be able to remove that uh, capsule fibrosis during capsulorexis. So you see I'm here, I'm going to place my stab incisions for my iris hooks. My first pearl is to make sure you place the iris hooks before placing viscoelastic. I can't emphasize this enough. Please do not put viscoelastic in before placing iris hooks. If you place viscoelastic in the eye first, it deepens the anterior chamber and it causes the iris to billow backward and it makes it more difficult to hook the iris uh, with the hooks. And so that's my first tip. Please put the hooks in first uh, before you do anything else. And in some cases, the iris is bowed back anyways, and you might have to mechanically bring the iris forward. Here, I'm going to place a subincisional hook through the sclera and conjunctiva. And I like to place air before I put tripan blue. This is another tip. Don't indiscriminately push a lot of tripan blue into the uh, anterior chamber because the, the tripan blue can actually travel into the vitreous space. I like to mechanically paint the surface with the cannula. You see here I'm using a cystotome to try to puncture through the anterior capsule. And you see here, I'm actually puncturing through the fibrosis, which is not working. So I go under the fibrosis and I puncture through normal capsule. And you can see I was able to get a little flap there. And then I'm going to go ahead and begin my capsulorexis. As you see, as I pull upward, it snags an area of fibrosis. And I'm, I'm not able to continue. Therefore, I use uh, micro scissors to cut through the fibrosis as much as possible and then uh, continue with the capsulorexis forceps, taking care not to uh, propagate the tear uh, radially. And it's a little bit of a challenge. You have to be able to pull the rexus around the fibrosis, and that's the key. If the fibrosis is so significant, you may have to can opener these types of cases. So remember, do not uh, overfill the eye with tripan blue, which can travel into the vitreous space. And when you encounter fibrosis at the anterior capsule, you may need to use micro scissors or you may need to use a can opener technique to create a capsulotomy. I perform my standard capsular fornix hydrodissection. As I perform the hydrodissection and try to decompress the bag, you can see that there's significant uh, zonular laxity and the capsular bag is not quite stable. In these hypermature lenses, I like to create a central groove first. So this is like a modified stop and chop technique. And uh, this is another pearl. With these really dense lenses, as you sculpt, because the lens is so dense, it might not actually cut through when you sculpt. And then number two, in these dense lenses, there tend to be very weak zonules. And so what you do is place the second instrument out to the capsular fornic to the equator, and then you can hold it as counter pressure while you sculpt. And so again, you wanna place a chopper out to the equator, hold the lens, and as you sculpt, you're able to uh, provide some counter resistance, which will allow you to actually effectively sculpt deeper into the lens and effectively chop it. So as you hear, I'm going to rotate the uh, tip 180 degrees, and then I want to go ahead and proceed with uh, my chop maneuver. I am uh, was able to get a nice chop all the way through. Because of the initial trough, this helps uh, prevent a, a posterior plate phenomena. And now I'm going to perform the cross chop, which is going to uh, break that right hemonucleus into two pieces. And, and the goal with these cases is it's a, a very dense lens and a case with very weak zonules. And so you want to minimize any zonular traction, which means no spinning of the lens or rotating the lens if possible. 
And that's why uh, you want to, again, support the lens with sculpting, uh, during sculpting with the second instrument. And then when you chop, you want to perform your chop maneuvers towards the center in centripetal fashion. And once you actually create uh, pieces, uh, you want to use mechanical fracturing techniques to crush the lens between the chopper and the finger tip. And all of this can be done without any ultrasound or vacuum to again, reduce any risk to the posterior capsule and to reduce ultrasonic energy. As you can see, uh, the chopping maneuvers are used and uh, the ultrasound is then pulsed intermittently to emulsify the lens material. The, uh, if you look back into the, the vitreous space, you can appreciate the glistening appearance of the silicone oil. The silicone oil causes the posterior capsule to be bowied uh, forward. So rather than having a concave posterior capsule, it, tr it tends to be more convex. And so this is where mechanical fracturing is really advantageous because when you have the posterior capsule coming forward, you want to be able to reduce your use of ultrasonic energy and vacuum. And that's what this technique does. Again, you see how I'm using the two instruments to crush the lens material. And as I do so, as the pieces become smaller and smaller, I'm emulsifying the lens pieces. Remember to keep the chopper uh, deep into the capsular bag every time you emulsify to make sure that the posterior capsule does not come up during uh, emulsification and causing a posterior capsule rupture. So as you can see, there's continual repeated cycles of mechanical fracturing and then emulsification of the lens material. I'm being very gentle, pulsing with the uh, ultrasound to again reduce uh, ultrasonic energy, but also I'm trying to reduce any potential exposure uh, of the posterior capsule to the phaco tip uh, to reduce any risk for complications. So you can see, uh, again, repeated maneuvers of getting the instruments together, crushing the lens material in between the chopper and the phaco tip. And sometimes you're going to go underneath the lens material with the chopper or sometimes uh, deeper with the phaco tip, like here. And so again, the, the point is you can utilize mechanical fracturing and uh, once you become more comfortable and confident, you can use a variety of different uh, slight uh, modifications and approaches to crush the lens material uh, with the phaco tip and chopper. And all of this is done without having to spin the lens within the bag and reducing zonular traction and effectively removing the lens with as little phaco energy as possible. As you can see here, the CDE is in double digits, uh, but that was primarily occurred during the sculpting. Most of the sculpting is where this energy occurred. The rest of the emulsification steps, uh, the CDE was not used very much, and it goes to show uh, the strength of the mechanical fracturing approach. You can see the glistening of the posterior capsule, uh, which is showing the silicone oil underneath it. I'm using the polymer tip to polish as much of the capsular bag as I can. I always like to keep the eye inflated whenever I go in and out of the eye with the instrumentation. And uh, in this case, um, after the bag is cleaned, I placed cohesive viscoelastic and then exchanging it and uh, placing the intractable lens in place. This is a single piece acrylic lens and I'm going to gently use uh, the viscoelastic cannula to open up the haptics and ensuring that the entire lens is within the capsular bag and rotating it in place. At this point, I'm gonna remove the iris hooks. First, you wanna pull on the uh, hook and pull back on the stopper and then uh, rotate it so the hook is facing upward and then pull it out uh, very easily. You can see that it really doesn't take much time. It's rather efficient to be able to remove the iris hooks in this manner. And then I'm gonna, Remove the viscoelastic going underneath the optic to make sure that there is no viscoelastic left behind. I'm going to go ahead and perform this fluid exchange and then quickly hydrate my incisions to again minimize any significant anterior chamber collapse. As you can see, this was a quite a challenging case, a case with uh, silicone oil in the eye, capsule fibrosis, posterior synechiae requiring iris hooks 
and intraocular scissors to cut the capsulotomy. Again, uh, with weak zonules, you want to minimize any zonular trauma and capsular trauma, and mechanical fracturing helps with this. I hope this was helpful to you, and thank you for your attention.